Hi, welcome back to my Avid YouTube channel. Uh, Bruce Bissett here from avionicseducation.com. I missed my post last week because I happened to be out of state giving a live course on aging aircraft wiring uh, at the FAA Academy. So I'm back here in sunny Arizona using my new green screen uh, studio uh, to cover a couple questions on the NCAT AET test and to go through and, and introduce, a, introduce a new online course that I'm putting together and that should be available for sale here pretty soon. Um, the whole point of this uh, questionnaire, F uh, FAQ session, is in light of the FAA's announcement about the NCAT AET and one another rating, and I'll talk about that in a second, being accepted as credible experience for repairman certificate application. I thought now, again, a good time to answer some common questions around the NCAT AET certification test. Uh, one of the most common questions I get from students is, when do I take the test? Well, the NCAT test has no testing prerequisites for the AET. You can sign up anytime, uh, anytime you think you're ready to go take the exam. Uh, however, the NCAT endorsement or add-on tests, you have to have a passing grade of 70% of the AET before you can go take uh, any of the, uh, of the uh, endorsement. They call them endorsements, we call them add-ons, add-on uh, tests. Okay, but before making that call, uh, consider that the AET costs $125 to take the test. If you take the, the it's $110 for any of the add-on ratings, plus any exam fees charged by the testing center. You may want to be prepared before throwing down your hard-earned money. Um, now, it is possible to pass the test cold if you have the right background and training. For me, for example, 12 years ago, I was hired to teach an avionics program and was required to have the certification before teaching the courses. I did pass, but my background at the time was that I served as an avionics technician in the Air Force and with all the training that goes with an instrument technician at the time, I did instruments and, and some comm nav and some autopilot work. I also worked as an avionics technician at a couple major airlines. And uh, on one of the first airlines, I was required to have the FCC General Radio's Operator's License as a condition of employment. I self-studied for that FCC exam. I at the, at the time I took the exam 30 years ago, uh, it was an unpublished test. Um, but I did pass it on the first time. So by the time I took the AET test, I was already an AMP mechanic with an IA. So between the FCC, the AMP, and my Air Force experience, I just had to come up with the correct answer to the questions I learned through experience and training over the previous 25 years. Now, if I received a score of less than 70, I would have had to wait uh, 30 days to take the test again, um, which means I would have been delayed in my teaching position. So I had some pretty good incentive to, uh, to do the test uh, on the first try. Now, most seasoned technicians do not go through the process of taking a test that only recently was something that a company wanted to see on a resume before hiring them as an avionics technician. It means avionics technician without previous avionics experience. Um, for example, if you're an AMP technician, you want to move into avionics, employers want to see that NCAT certification before you make that application. Okay. So the question is then, when do I take the test as part of my learning process? Well, to answer that question, in that if you're in a school, you need to look at the curriculum of the school you're at and compare that to the NCAT standards. Now, if you happen to be in a 147 uh, FAA school, then you're there. Two thirds of the uh, of this 147 subject materials is going to be covered in the NCAT test. But I need to say something here about the FAA and the FCC test. Both of these question pools are published today and many teaching programs simply provide the students with the actual question and then push the correct answer. The NKAT and the add-on certificates are not the same as the FAA or the FCC questions, nor are the test pools published. To have confidence to pass the test, you'll need to know the information well enough to be able to formulate the correct answer based on the information you're given. So you may ask, Bruce, what do you mean? Well, unlike FAA exams where you could memorize a straight up question that will have an unambiguous answer, and I'm gonna use an example here, um, on the FAA's basic electricity question, there'll be a question in there about a parallel circuit with three resistors. 
And the question would be, what is the total resistance of the circuit? All the person has to do is take in the test to simply remember the correct formula and then go through and solve and then look at the look for the right answer, the closest answer. <clears throat> NCAT questions will differ in that you'll need to look at the circuit, evaluate what's happening now, and what happens when something in the circuit is changed. For example, you're given the same parallel circuit, but instead of just asking for the totals, you're going to be asked when R3 is halved and R1 is tripled, what happens to the overall current, and what happens to the voltage across R2? Well, most people who learn the other way start calculating the circuit, find the answers. And they spend a lot of time doing this. However, if you had a great understanding of how current and voltage move around the circuit, then you would have recognized right away, had you read all the answers first, that only one answer had the phrase, voltage across R2 remains the same. Your in-depth knowledge of Kirchhoff's laws made that answer easy for you, especially if you understood all the subjects ahead of time before you took the test. It saves a lot of time. So before you go and sign up to take the test, ask yourself this. Did I learn the FA or FCC test questions, or do I really know and understand the material? If you answered yes to the former, you may want to read some more before dropping down your hard-earned money. Another question is, where do I take the test? Well, that's actually an easy one. All you do is call the phone number for Credential Testing Services, CTS, and it's found on the ASTM website under the NCAT tab. Uh, on there will have a 1-800 number or a click to go through to where you could go through and find a testing center near you and then pay your money and schedule the test. And these are normally at the same locations that you that the FA and the FCC exams are given. Uh, there is another option uh, for taking the test if your training provider has the approval to give the exam. That would save you some money there. Or you could take the courses with the Aircraft Electronics Association, the AEA. They offer NCAT AET at their many meetings and conventions around the country. Um, go to AEA.net for more information. So another question is, when can I take the add-on exams? Well, technically, you can take the add-on ratings immediately after being notified that you pass AET, which you'll know before you leave because the tests are graded right as you submit them. However, that result has to be confirmed by CTS, uh, the CTS Testing Center before you could schedule to take any of its endorsements. There's no guarantee that the testing center uh, your ad has an open communication channel that allows somebody to take a test on the same day. But you can always ask uh, if, you're, if you think you're ready to take the test. My last NCAT question today is, what if I do have my AMP, but I don't have any experience or training in any of that last one third of the subject areas of the NCAT AET test? Well, I happen to have a solution for you. Many years ago, I wrote, here we go, the NCAT AET Test Review uh, Study Guide to help my students review for my college exam. Uh, I created this book as both a review guide and a study source. In my book, I only cover the FA general subject areas at what I would call a subject review. Uh, the reason for this is because the source book for all of the FAR 147 generals were already printed in the book. Ow already printed in a book with over 500 pages. I did not want to completely rewrite the book uh, material, wanting to concentrate on other parts uh, that were useful uh, for the other, other one third of the subject areas. Okay, so if you had trouble with the AP general areas while you were studying using my book, then I would encourage you to review the FA handbooks uh, instead of just relying on my book. Okay, just, just a side note here, I forgot to mention, just a side note here, the new FA General's 8083 handbook uh, came out, and I have my copy of it, and I think many 147 schools are going to be surprised to learn what's included in the new test standard. In addition to many of the NCAT AET subjects now included in the basic electricity section, this new handbook now includes a lot of subjects that were once in the intermediate electricity section of the Air, FA Airframe Handbook. Uh, my plan is moving forward as I will create a basic electricity online course using the new FA standards. So stay tuned for that. 
So then what about the other one third of the subjects in the AET? Well, my NCAT review uh, textbook, uh, I dedicate more than half of that book to those one third subjects as, as a single uh, source learning aid. Uh, starting with the basics of uh, semiconductors, amplifiers, work through oscillators. And then I go over those digital subjects like Boolean math and uh, uh, electronic number systems, counters, adders, flip-flops, things like that. Um, which leads me to my last announcement. I am converting my worksheet textbook to an online course. So if you didn't know already or heard about it in a previous film or video, um, my worksheet book is now out of print. But I didn't want to let all those uh, questions and answers go to waste. So what I wanted to do, or what I did, is I've taken all 75 of the worksheets and I've now uh, converted them to an individual study assignments. So you go to the website, you take the course, you download the study assignments, you read the associated textbook section, answer the questions, and then come back to the next section where I'll have um, the answers uh, for the questions in a video lecture style. So I am going to begin putting that NCAT AT test course out in parts, uh, concentrating on that first one third, which is about chapter three uh, subject areas first. And that's to get encourage those people who already have an AMP to start taking the online NCAT course. Of course, later on, uh, as I progress, we'll get the rest of the materials from the AMP section. So it'll be offered on my uh, Thinkific Avionics Education channel. I'll have links to my Facebook page, the Thinkific School, and the uh, and uh, uh, the NCAT uh, links in the description below. So thanks for your time, and please share this video with anybody who might be thinking about getting into aircraft electronics or avionics. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and press the notification bell to receive updates when new videos are released. So until next time, remember, someday a plane will leave the gate without a pilot. It'll never get to the gate without a technician. So long for now. See you next time.